Next unit is the orange unit. Uh, what the company, this company has done, uh, RCC SKJ, they've uh, colour coded them. So, like I said, the green is the basic unit. You go up to the more uh, mid range, I guess you could call it, which is the orange. Then uh, you have the yellow and the top of the range, which is pr probably my uh, personal favourite, would be the black, the black uh, unit. This one here uh, is the same as the, uh, the green. The only difference is, and a couple of little features that I do like on it, is that um, if you wanted to, you can actually plug in not only uh, off these Dean's connectors here, which uh, all the units have, they're a Dean's type plug that you can uh, plug in there, already attached, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you can actually put your a standard um, 4.8 volt uh, flight pack in there as well, one in either side and a switch in the middle uh, to turn the uh, unit on or off, which I find is not a bad little feature. Uh, if you just wanted to run off a standard um, battery pack or two battery packs, you need uh, two, you, you want to have that dual redundancy and that's why there's two leads connected in. Uh, I find that a good feature, uh, just my, my um, personal preference on that one. If you notice here too, you'll see this little uh, it just looks like a little fuse, but it's not. It's actually a little connector that goes between the two. Uh, there's three wires, and it connects between the wires. And what it does, it can step down the voltage uh, to your receiver. So if you were to put in uh, a battery pack of, um, say, uh, 6.5 volts, by positioning the way where you put this actual uh, tab just here, you can actually drop it down by half a volt. Uh, per time and get yourself down to around about 5.5 volts. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what you've got to be careful of is uh, whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. And that's why, like I said, to, to save the hassle of uh, trying to step down with batteries or um, adapting batteries with Dean's connectors, uh, I probably would find just plugging straight into this with, uh, say, 2000 milliamp hour, um, 4.8 volt uh, night um, middle nickel metal high drives uh, battery would be uh, more than suitable. Again, you have the uh, eight outputs, but there's an extra one on the side there, and that's used for your CDI ignition. So you can actually run your CDI and cut your CDI off this unit here. Uh, the other thing I, which I didn't explain on the uh, green unit, all of them have a little mounting uh, tape and also a little bit of um, foam rubber. And that foam is where your receiver sits. So what you can do, you can actually set it up in such a way that you can uh, place your receiver underneath that and um, move your wires out, depending on what you're using. You can use 2.4 or you can even use um, uh, 36 meg if uh, you so desire uh, on this unit without any uh, problems at all. I've tried a couple of uh, different um, models of receivers and uh, the different frequencies and uh, not a problem at all. But uh, this is my Futaba that I uh, currently use on one of the models and uh, not a problem at all. Like I said, the strap goes in. The strap itself is set up in such a way that uh, what you can do, you can actually um, re restrain the receiver in there, but the other advantage too with the uh, way that this has been set up, not only can you restrain the receiver in this way, you can actually, by the time you put all your cabling in, running through there, you can actually put your cabling in between this section here and hold it down into place so it doesn't uh, move around. Not a bad little feature. Um, like I said, it's uh, one way of attaching the uh, receiver. Uh, keeps everything together. I've uh, checked it for heat generation and all that type of thing after having the batteries plugged in for quite a period of time. And uh, like I said, I haven't had any issues with uh, that which could affect the receiver. So I don't see a real problem there at all. As I said, there's eight outlets plus another one for the um, uh, CDI ignition, same again on the other, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two outlets on each one of those uh, four, which gives you a total of, um, sorry, on the, the eight, which gives you a total of 16 servos that you can actually operate off uh, one of these units with, um, without having to worry about or resorting to using of uh, the use of a wire lead. The other thing, as I said, you do have your CDI uh, ignition cutoff, and that's just two points here where you have your battery goes in, CDI comes out, and uh, when it lights up, it'll tell you that um, everything's ready to go. When you have it turned off, the CDI is, uh, is basically t switched off. Uh, so if you want to run 4.8 volt battery, uh, like a nickel metal hydride, or 
something around about 6 volts um, on a battery pack. You can just plug the battery straight into there and this will do the uh, switching on or off for you uh, to cut your CDI ignition. little light glows up to let you know that everything's working and that lets you know uh, that, it's, um, that it's actually armed or, or actually turned off. Uh, the other thing with these units too, you may notice that down alongside there's a couple of little um, red LEDs. So when they're turned on, those red LEDs around the unit will glow. So that'll tell you that the unit itself is uh, switched on. Uh, it's a good little feature. I've had a few models, even in the daylight, you can uh, pick up to, tell, to detect that it's actually uh, um, set up. So it's not bad at all. It works, it works okay.